Hi, I'm Dr. Lisa Thompson of DrLisaMThompson.com, and I have a question for you. Are people not liking, commenting, and sharing your Facebook posts or any other posts you're doing on social media? Well, pay close attention because in this video, I'm going to share with you eight simple tips that can help you increase your connection with your audience. So the key in building a successful online business is you need to build an audience and engage your audience before you sell to your audience. So you may have gone through and identified who your audience is and you know what their big pain points are. But sometimes you're, when you put out content that addresses those pain points, you have all the right intentions, okay, you're putting out good content, but people aren't really internalizing it. They're not responding. So what we have to do is we have to really look at the structure of the message and we have to really look at the intention we are putting into the message. And I learned something from reading John Maxwell's book, The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. And in the book, he talks about you need to make a connection. You need to touch the heart before you lend a hand. And what he means by that is you've got to connect with them. You've got to communicate into them, okay, so that they can reciprocate, that they know that you have their best interests at heart. And they feel like they know you. Because people do business with those who they know, like, and trust and who are like themselves. So what do we do to, to really increase that communicating into people? Okay, there's a difference between communicating at people and there are ways of communicating into people. And we want to focus on communicating into people. We are really touching their heart and their soul and we're getting them to respond and connect with us on an emotional level. So there are eight ways that I learned from John Maxwell in his book, The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. So as I share these eight tips, get out a pad of paper and a pen and jot these down. And before you post anything on social media, let this be a little checklist, okay? Let this be a little checklist for you because the better you get at this, okay, where you're able to lead and connect to their heart, eventually when you extend the hand of saying, hey, you may want to try what I have here, whether it's my product, my service, or my business opportunity, they are going to be more open to it. So let's start with number one. The first thing you have to do, and if you haven't done this already, is you have to connect with yourself. You have to connect with yourself because who you are is what you're going to attract. So you have to know who you are. And I learned this in 2014 from my very good friend and successful home business owner, Diane Hockman, who's been in the industry for 20 years. And she taught me these four questions. And I am so grateful that she did. Okay, and these four questions are going to help identify and give clarity to who you are. So, number one, who are you? Number two, what do you stand for? Number three, who are you fighting for? And number four, where are you going? Okay, you have to have a vision of who you are and where you're going because people are going to buy into that vision. When you think of some of the most successful people, all right, why do we watch people like Rocky Balboa on the main screen or a Luke Skywalker or we're inspired by a Mother Teresa or a John F. Kennedy because they stirred people's hearts. They stirred people's hearts and they had a vision of where they wanted to go. And, people, and it really touched people. And because they were so in tune with who they were, they were able to craft a message that also was incorporated into what they wanted to do to serve their audience. Okay, so number one, connect with yourself. Number two, 
is communicate with openness and sincerity. So often what I see on social media is people do things where they're flashing cash, they're flashing off um, big opulent lifestyles, okay? Or if they don't have it, they'll sit there and take pictures of <clears throat> of these you know the big the big mansion the big boats thinking that that's what their audience is looking for and really it's not or they'll share updates of people who you know they go to a live event and they share the big stories of someone who um, made a hundred thousand dollars in six months or they make or they went in and they got this huge result in a short period of time. Sometimes that works against your audience because sometimes the little victories are going to resonate more with your audience, such as, you know, the person who lost two pounds, okay, with a weight loss shake okay or someone who's just started their business and they acquired their first customer or they made their first fifty dollar commission that's gonna have more staying power okay why because it is openness and sincerity you see if we are, are communicating in a way that is not authentic and we are promoting something that's almost too good to be true you know, it, you're not going to get the good results. You want to be open and you want to be vulnerable. And that means to sharing your story in your journey, not always the huge successes, but sharing the struggles. Now, what you don't want to be doing is complaining. There's this fine line where you don't want to sit <clears throat> and turn your social media into a place where you're complaining all the time, too. That's the other thing is that you can be almost to the point where you're revealing too much information and you turn your Facebook into a personal diary. There are certain things that your audience needs to hear from you and there are certain things you do not disclose, okay? But if you want to share your story and sharing about the challenges that you had when you first got started, you can talk about how you overcame those. What were the distinctions that you made that helped you overcome the obstacle? Maybe it was with losing weight. What did you learn to do that made you shift to start having permanent weight loss? Okay, so that is number two. Number three is know your audience. This is huge. And so what you want to make sure is you want to know your audience well. You want to know what the buzzwords they're using. You not only want to know their problems, you want to know what do they fear and what do they dream about. What do What is really something that they aspire, okay? Do they aspire, could this be like the dream, the mother who doesn't want to, um, you know, the first time mom who is just scared to death to drop her child off the first time at daycare after maternity leave and her dream is to be able to be home so that she can be witness all of the milestone moments that her child's going to have those first steps first word first tooth you know take them to school be home and cooking them a home cooked dinner okay those are some dreams that really matter to people a lot of times the dreams aren't having the the million dollar home or the million dollar mansion or having you know going out on yachts or sports cars sometimes it's very very simple so you need to know your audience and number four you want to live your message okay so you want to be that's where it comes back to number one no connecting with yourself Okay, you want to make sure that you're putting content out <clears throat> that not only <clears throat> excuse me that <clears throat> that not only serves your audience, but it also communicates your message and what you're about and how you're going to help people and make an impact on the world. All right, because it's about a message to market match. And if you are, you know, if, if what you're promoting you don't believe in, 
people are going to sense that okay so you've got to be living your message so that means practice what you're preaching so if you're promoting a weight loss product are you using that product are you getting results with that product what are you learning and on your weight loss journey as you take this product okay that's living your message number five go where they are go where they are that is a method you know and so that means when you're looking at your you know when you're defining your audience how do they best take your communication okay some people they're not real big at looking at you know reading long posts some of them are very visual they like interaction so Facebook lives are probably going to be one way that you know to connect with your audience people love that interaction or is it someone who loves visuals infographics images so you have to sit and think about what is the primary way your audience likes to receive information okay and so then what you may want to do is have other ways of repurposing your content too so if you did do a Facebook live you could repurpose it turn it into a blog post you could turn it into an audio or you could turn it into um, you know uploading it to your YouTube channel okay so there are ways so you want to make sure that you are going where they are okay and that also means too is you know when you're going out into um, you know on Facebook going into Facebook groups you want to make sure you're going into Facebook groups where you know your audience likes to hang out or fan pages that you know your audience will visit and you're adding value you're not pitching or spamming okay number six focus on them not yourself so again we mentioned this earlier so when you're talking about sharing your struggles sharing your story or sharing the stories of others like if you're at a live event and you you share a story of someone who's overcome an obstacle you want to make sure that it is focusing on them so that's why knowing their their big you know the big issues so when you're at a live event and you're noticing that you know that a lot of you know um, maybe first-time moms are having success okay and they share their story of what they did those are the stories that at a live event you want to make sure you're capturing down and taking notes I learned this from top earner Ray Higdon where he said the the most important part of the live event is the rewards and recognition where you can sit and hear the stories and find which stories are going to connect with your audience the most the other part is is um, you know if you get magazines or you look at your company's you know Facebook page or in their Facebook groups and they're recognizing people and there's a story that you know a, you know a featured member of the month that would resonate with your with your audience make sure you take note of that and you you promote that type of content because that is going to help reach people as well number six focus on them not yourself okay you are here to serve them and the other thing to do too and and I love this because um, I had a huge breakthrough I used to have huge phone anxiety when I would have to try to call and follow up with people because um, number one I have only, only I'm 50 percent deaf so it's real hard for me to hear on the phone a lot so being on the phone was just a huge huge challenge and I would just have these anxiety attacks that I may not be able to hear them very well and so when I learned that they're they don't care what my anxieties are they're only worried about on the other end of the phone how I'm able to help them and so when I made that shift everything changed and so I'm not afraid to be on the phone anymore so that was a huge thing for me number seven you gotta believe in them believe in your audience okay you know and what we mean by that is you have to believe that they have value you have to believe that they have goals and dreams that are noble and worthy and that means not to belittle them so when you are prospecting and you're reaching out and you're talking to people you're seeking out conversation 
over conversion. What you're doing now is you are able to find out what matters to them. And you really structure content around that's going to serve them. And you connect with them. And you let them know, hey, that is a huge, you know, if that's what matters to them. Okay, you may not agree with it, but you have to validate and affirm that, you know, everybody's different. Everybody has their own hopes, dreams, and aspirations. And we have to tap into that. Because so often people are, are just living day to day and they don't, you know, they forget about their dreams and they go to their, um, their leading lives in quiet desperation, okay? And we have to get them connected back to what their driving force is and what really matters to them and that, yes, they have value to share with the world, okay? And then number eight, you want to offer direction and hope. Okay, and this is really powerful. When you give people hope, you give them a future. And that's why sharing the small success stories are so powerful because it gives them hope. Because a lot of times if they are someone who hasn't made um, six figures before and they see someone making six figures, that is too much for them to comprehend. It's too overwhelming. But if they see someone who is, you know, that first time mom will go back to her again and she noticed that some, you know, that another first time mom was able to earn an extra $500 a month from home, that gives her hope thinking, you know what, if she can do it, I can do it. And if you're showing Thing, stories about weight loss, how people are, are gradually losing weight loss, you know, with losing weight, maybe one to two pounds a week, and they're happy, they're feeling more energy, they don't feel like they're on a roller coaster anymore. That's going to give more people hope, thinking if they can do it, I can do it. So always making sure that you are giving them direction and hope. So there you have it, my friends. Those are the eight simple tips to really kind of go through before you post anything on social media to make sure that it meets that criteria. So let's review them really quickly. Number one, are you connecting with yourself? Number two, are you communicating with openness and sincerity? Number three, do you know your audience? Number four, are you living your message? Number five, do you, are you going where they are? Number six, do you focus on them and not yourself? Number seven, do you believe in them? And number eight, do you offer direction and hope? So if you're providing that type of content and it's meeting all of those eight criteria, you're going to have an increase in your results. And eventually, it's not the size of your audience. It's going to be how responsive they are to your message and if that is a message to market match you're going to see more people be open to you looking at your product service or business opportunity and they're either going to become a rep or a customer in your business so i hope you found this video valuable today if you did leave a comment and share and if you do not have a copy of john maxwell's book the 21 irrefutable laws of leadership you can pick it up on Amazon. It's available on paperback, Kindle, or Audible form. I have the link in the video description and in the first pinned comment below this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.